Well, good morning. good morning. Welcome to Pine Island United Methodist Church, where we exist to reach people with God's love, transform lives, and change the world. My name is Kaylee Vita. I'm the pastor here. We are just so glad that you're joining us this morning, whether you're worshiping with us in person or you're joining us online today. Let's begin with prayer this morning. From all of our life's pathways, Lord, you have called us to this place. Be with us as we listen for your word and seek your ways. Guide our steps and guard our lives that we may serve you more effectively in this broken world. Amen. Will you please stand and worship with us this morning? So heaven is real and death is 
Please turn to a neighbor, welcome a new face, and uh, greet everyone today. Well, as you start to make your way back to your seats, I'll remind you all that we have black books that are on the sides of all of the pews. If you open those up, there's a place for you to let us know that you're here today and um, to give us any information you'd like or if you've had a change of information in your email or phone number. Um, if you give us your email, we'll put you on the list to get our weekly newsletter that goes out every Wednesday uh, with a mobile message and then with the calendar of events of things that are happening around here. Just a few that I'd like to note today after service is our food and fellowship meal. This Sunday is a chicken noodle dinner complete with mashed potatoes. And we've asked people to bring sides and desserts. If you didn't bring anything today, it is perfectly fine. There is always more food than we need to feed everybody. So please, all of you, please uh, stay after service with us today. We'll, it's to my left, your right over in Wesley Hall. We'll join together for our meal afterward. It's always a fabulous time with great food. So please join us. 
Um, tomorrow night, Monday night, September 11th, we'll begin our Monday night class um, that I lead. We're using this book called The Seven Secrets of the Spirit-Filled Life. It starts at 6.30. We'll meet over here in the Sunday school room off the sanctuary. Um, anybody is welcome to join us, and you can uh, we can get you a link to the book if you don't have it already. This week, we will go over the first seven chapters. They're all very short, um, so if you want to join us, it's not too late. You still can. Just come tomorrow night. Feel free to jump in um, at that point. Women, ladies, the Women's Circle meets this Tuesday from 12.30 to 2 p.m. They meet over in the office building in the uh, classrooms over there. It's always bring your own lunch, dessert, and drinks are always provided. And this month, the program is going to be Marion Clark. She's going to be presenting on Deborah, the only woman judge in the Bible. So it's sure to be a great time. All women are welcome. So please plan to join them this week. Just a reminder that um, directory photos are going to be taken. They are uh, September 24th and October 1st. <laughs> and um, we're going to be taking photos before and after service. So there are sign-ups on the welcome desk out in the narthex. When you go out the doors, right to the left, there's a little desk and there's a clipboard on there. It's got all kinds of times on there, five-minute time slots for pictures. These are for you to uh, your family to get in those pictures so that we can put those in the directory. And then um, we're asking everybody who is a, a seasonal person who won't be back by uh, the beginning of November, we will send you an email to let you know how you can contribute your picture for our directory. So be watching your email for those instructions. And then finally, I just want to let you all know that we will be having a, serve, a memorial service for Muriel, Muriel Pletcher next Sunday, directly following the Sunday morning service. And everyone is inv invited to attend, and then we'll be having a light lunch right after that service as well. And there won't be any Sunday school next week. We'll postpone the start of adult Sunday school one more week. So it will start on September 24th if you're part of that class or looking to be part of that class. All right, so I see Mo's at the door ready. So come on in. And any kids that are in here that want to come up and join her for the children's message, go ahead and come on up. So, um, we're learning about a story in big church today that we have already done last week. I know, we're a little off sync, but we're learning about Moses and the burning bush. And so, Moses went to this bush that was burning, but it wasn't burning up. And he was like, what's going on? And God starts talking to him from this bush. And God says, I want you to do this super special thing. I want you to go help my people in Egypt. And Moses tells him that he can't do it because he is not special. He's not good at talking. And God doesn't tell him, oh, well, I'm going to make you special. God says, no, you're going to do it because I picked you to do it. And you're Moses, and I want you to do this thing. So we don't have to be special to do special things. God doesn't have to give us this amazing special ability. We can just do it. If God picks us to do something, we can do it. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us opportunities. We can do it no matter what. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you would like, you can join me to go learn a little bit more, or you can stay in here with your family. <laughs> well, as they head off for kids' worship, and our ushers prepared to come and serve us this morning. I'll remind you that there are many ways that you can give, and those are listed for you on the screen. Let's pray together today. Lord of all mercy and compassion, bless these gifts lovingly offered and all the people here. Help us to use these gifts for ministries of hope through our church and into our community, nation, and world. Amen.
Good morning, God. You are the great I am. You've blessed us again today with beauty and splendor abounding, and we thank you for all you've given us. Please forgive us our mistakes and continue to give us your grace and blessing. Open our eyes to the burning bush in our lives. May we, like Moses, have reverence in the presence of your majesty. Please help us to hear you and give us the courage to share your message with those we meet. You have made us and have a plan for our lives, a plan to show your glory. And now, Lord, we say the prayer that Jesus Christ gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning. Beautiful morning. Our scripture reading today is Exodus 3, 1 through 15. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flame of fire out of the bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to them out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove your sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses had his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the miseries of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know the sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians, and to bring them up and out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, Perserites, the Hephathites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israels has now come to me. I have also sent how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that is sent I, I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you. And they asked me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord the God of ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is my title for all generations. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you, Roger, for reading our scripture today, and thank you to Mary for praying for us this morning. Now, how many of you have either read or seen Alice in Wonderland? Yeah? Okay. And do you remember her little phrase in there, curiouser and curiouser? Yeah. Well, Alice says this uh, when she's eaten one of the magic cakes, and then her neck shoots up, now, she's not angry or frustrated. She's just noticing things, things that don't seem quite right. Well, that's where we find Moses today, noticing things, things that don't seem quite right. Perhaps he is curiouser and curiouser. Will you pray with me? God, as we come today and approach this wonderful story, open our eyes to see you. Jesus, open our ears to hear you. Holy Spirit, open our minds and hearts to experience you today. May we be curiouser and curiouser ourselves, noticing things and finding you in the midst of it all. Amen. 
Now, we are just beginning to make our way through the book of Exodus with the Israelites. Now, this is a book filled with great stories, rich tradition, frustrating tales, and a whole range of emotions. Basically, human life. Now, our main character throughout this book is Moses. Moses, that Hebrew baby boy who was saved by his mother building him a basket boat. Now, of course, there were at least four other women who worked to save this baby boy as well. Women who cared deeply about life, about justice, about doing what was right. And today, we find the man Moses in the desert, tending his father-in-law's flock of sheep. Now, it's believed that he's approximately 80 years old at this point. So it begs the question, well, what has happened in between that basket boat and this burning bush that's brought him out here to the desert away from Egypt? Nothing good, I can assure you. Moses ran away from Egypt because he killed a man. In chapter 2, which we skipped over, I'm going to interrupt myself here and explain what I mean by skipped out, skipped over and explain to you how I figure out what I'm preaching every week, what scripture I'm going to be using. I follow something called the Revised Common Lectionary. It's a three-year cycle of scriptures that, when it's followed, takes us through most of the Bible. Now, each week, there's an Old Testament selection, there's a psalm, there's a New Testament selection, and then there's something from the epistle or the letters that are in the New Testament. Right now, we are following through the Old Testament readings that go through Exodus. We don't read one from every section. Um, We don't read all four readings for the day. But in order to get through most of the book, those who designed the RCL, that's the acronym for for short, they skip over some of the sections. And chapter 2 of Exodus just happens to be one of those sections. So, as I was saying, in chapter 2, which we skipped over, we're told that Moses grew up and he went out to his people, the Hebrews, and he saw their forced labor. And he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his kinsfolk. And he looked around and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and covered him up with sand. Now the next day he went back out. And then he saw two Hebrews fighting one another. And he said to the two Hebrews, why are you fighting your fellow Hebrews? And one of them asks Moses, are you going to kill me like you killed that Egyptian? Uh Uh-oh. Apparently someone did see. Now, before we go on and talk about what Moses did after this, let's just spend a minute here. Moses knew that the Hebrews were his people, his kinsfolk. That means that Pharaoh's daughter, the woman who adopted Moses as her son, didn't keep his identity from him. That means that she told him who he was, maybe even about the other women who worked hard to save him. Women like Shifra and Pua, those two midwives. Women like Miriam, his sister, who stood watch and then basically told Pharaoh's daughter that she was going to adopt him and raise him. Women like his own birth mother, who followed the rules, but adapted them just a little bit by building him his own little ark to float down the river in. She told him his heritage that he comes from a long line of justice seekers who valued life. It's in his blood. It's part of his makeup to love justice, to fight for it. And that's what I believe he was doing that day, that he thought he was doing that day, when he saw the Egyptian beating up a Hebrew. But he needs some refinement, some, re- some direction. Now, Moses was obviously afraid for good reason. 
And he worried that what he'd done would soon be found out. Well, it doesn't take long for Pharaoh to know what's happened. And now Pharaoh wants to kill Moses. So what does Moses do? Well, he runs. He runs away to Midian, where he meets his future wife, and he becomes a shepherd. Now, chapter 2 ends this way. This is verses 23 through 25. After a long time, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out. Out of the slavery, their cry for help rose up to God. God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God looked upon the Israelites and God took notice of them. God heard God remembered, God looked up on them, and God noticed them. And then God called Moses. Now chapter 3 should really begin with the word meanwhile. Because while the Israelites were still groaning, Under slavery, God was already taking action. When the oppressed are crying out to God, God is already at work to set them free. We might ask, God, what took so long? And that's okay. We can ask those questions. We might not get the exact answers We seek other than to know this. God's timing is not our timing. God's ways are not always our ways. But I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God's ways are always good. So God shows up as a fiery bush in the middle of the desert. Now, the Hebrew word that's used here for bush is an obscure word that isn't used much. And the way that the Jewish rabbis dealt with this obscure word was to assume that this is the most obscure, scrawny little thorn bush that you've ever seen. It's a waste of space in the desert. But that's where God chooses to be present in a plant with no use whatsoever. God chooses to show up, to be present in something that others would say was useless, good for nothing. Isn't that just like God? And then there is this almost comical line from Moses. He says, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why this bush has, is not burned up. Now, it's comical because no one talks like that. But what it does point out is Moses is curious. He must see what is going on here. Now, in the rabbinic tradition, some have proposed that this bush has always been burning, always been on fire since the beginning of time. And Moses is the first person to notice it. The first person to bother to stop and look at it. Now, whether that's true or not, Moses is attentive Moses notices things don't seem quite right here, like Alice in Wonderland, curiouser and curiouser. And when God saw that Moses noticed, well, look out, Moses, Moses, God called his name. God knows his name because God sees, God knows, God notices. And now we have this dialogue that takes place between Moses and a talking bush. 
just stop for a minute and put yourself in Moses' shoes. Actually, we can't do that because Moses had to take his shoes off. So, okay. Well, just imagine being Moses. You see a bush on fire, but it's not burning up. You're curious, so you stop to see what's going on. And suddenly the bush is calling your name. Uh, Here I am, you say to the bush. And the bush says, I've come to help. And I'm sending you. Huh? Well, then the bush says to you reassuringly, I'll be with you. And who are you? Right? I mean, it's strange. Yes? Thank goodness no one is around to see Moses talking to a bush. Now, alas, strange as it may seem, it is God who is speaking to Moses through this burning bush. So we have this dialogue between Moses and God, which I love. I love that there's this back and forth between them. Too often, we think our relationship with God is more of a one-way thing. God speaks the end. But truly, the Bible often portrays the life of faith as a dialogue, a back and forth, respecting God while engaging God, hearing God while also letting God hear us, trusting God while also moving forward together with eyes, ears, and minds open to what we've yet to discern, perceive, understand, or experience. A dialogue of working out our faith by asking questions, by telling God what's on our minds, by being open and honest with God. That's what Moses is doing here. God has said, this is who I am, the God of your ancestors, and I've heard, I know, and I've come. Now I'm sending you. And Moses says, but who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? And notice that God doesn't answer Moses' question directly. God could have, God could have said, you are Moses. You are uniquely qualified for this job. Remember, you grew up in the palace. You know how it all works, the government and talking to Pharaoh. You were educated there. Remember all of that? But God doesn't say that. Instead, God says, I will be with you. Moses is working it out. It isn't just, here I am and off I go. No, it's here I am. But who am I that God has called me? It isn't really a surprise that Moses would ask the question, is it? Who am I to go before Pharaoh? Because Moses knows who he is. And quite honestly, he'd probably like to forget who he is and what he's done. He ran all the way to the desert to forget it. But confessing who we are, all of our inadequacies and excuses, that's only the beginning. That's the first step in this relationship with God. This starting point on our journey of becoming a disciple. It isn't where we stay. We don't stay in the shame. We move into grace because of God's call on our lives. You see, this dialogue, this back and forth, it encapsulates our own relationship with God. God calls, and it causes us to say, who am I? And isn't that exactly what we are going to figure out together, us and God? The story of Moses, it reminds me of another story. The story of me. The story of how I got here in front of you today preaching every week or nearly every week. Now, I knew God was calling me to do something in the church when I was 15 years old. I didn't know exactly what just yet, but I knew it would be in the church. Now, 
There was a 29 year gap between that time I knew God was calling me and the time that I became a pastor. And in between those years, many things happened. Just some things just life and some things they discouraged me. And by the time I got to the place of reaccepting this call, I again knew the call was to the church, but I still didn't know in what capacity. I knew it wasn't to be a youth pastor, a children's pastor, or a worship pastor. And I, what I would have told you then was that it wasn't to be a pastor who preached every week. Not because I was afraid of public speaking, but because... I didn't think I was called to be a preacher. Oh, sure, I can do it every once in a while, but not every week. So then I had my uh, burning bush moment, if you will, when I knew that I had to answer this call that I'd been given in my teenage years, and that happened in May of 2017. August of 2018, I headed off to seminary. All the while, people keep asking me, what area of ministry do you think you want to be in? And I kept answering, I don't know. Maybe an associate? And then the fall of 2019 came, and I took my preaching class. Now, in seminary, my seminary at least, we took one preaching class. And we got to preach one time in that preaching class. Ah, they train us well in seminary for what we do every day. But alas, that one time changed my life. I finished that sermon with such a feeling of joy and peace. It was undeniable and unbelievable all at the same time. And I remember thinking to myself, literally, this is it. This is what I've been called to do. And do you know what? I still didn't think I was called to be a preaching pastor because I kept making excuses like Moses. I kept saying, I'm not good enough. I don't have enough training. I don't have enough experience. I can't do it. We didn't get this far in Moses' story today, but there comes a point. He has five excuses that he gives to God and the last excuse, he finally just says, he's at the end, of all of his excuses, and he says, please, God, just send someone else. <laughs> that was me. Please, God, just send someone else. Give me something else to do. I don't know why. I had people in my life encouraging me. They were listening to my sermons and telling me that I was good, that I was capable of doing it. But do you know it wasn't until I was here doing it every week that I believed like really believed this is what I was made to do. This is my calling. One day after I had preached for a few weeks in a row here, I had this moment in which God said to me, I told you I would be with you. It isn't about you, Kaylee. It's about me. You see, God was, is, and has always been with me. And we have been, me, me and God, we have been, we still are. We're working this out together, answering that question that I've asked. Who am I that you would send me? Now, friends, Moses didn't believe in himself, at least right away. But he'd been trained for this moment. God put him in the Pharisee's palace as a small child to prepare him for this moment. Moses had a heart for justice and in doing what was right. God put that in him. And Moses said, who am I? And God said, I will be with you. And we will work that out along the way. Where is God calling you today? Be curious like Moses and take notice. Perhaps you will see God where others don't. Maybe the God we seek is right in front of us all the time. We simply need to take notice. Or perhaps you hear God, but you are asking 
who am I? Who am I to do that work? Who am I to go here or there? Perhaps you feel unworthy or inadequate. Hear God say to you, I will be with you. My grace is sufficient. We will work this out together. Together, we will discover who you are. Because no matter who you are, no matter how old you are, no matter where you've been, where you live, or what you've gone through, God is calling you to something. And what I know for sure is that God is faithful. God will be with you. Let's pray. Faithful God, we want to be curious like Moses and notice when things don't seem quite right. We want to see you in the things that others pass by. But being curious is just the first step. We hear you calling us, God. Calling us to things we aren't sure we are ready for, things we aren't sure we are good enough to do. Who are we that you would use us? Reassure us today of your faithfulness. Remind us today that you are with us and together we will work out who we are. Use us, God, to reach people with your love, transform lives, and change the world. Amen. So as you stand and we get ready to close out today, I'm going to share a little story from this week. Um, Kason and Kenna were having a little argument in the back seat on the way home. And they were talking about some Bible thing, and Kenna apparently didn't know the answer. And Kason looked at her, and he said, come on, Kenna, how long have you known God? And she said, I don't know, Mom, how long have I known God? <laughs> and I said, you know, I'm not really quite sure. But here's what I do know. God has known you forever. And that's the important part. And he has called you for something. He has called each of us for something very special. So I think that that was uh, relevant to share with you today because he has called you for something special. Take my hands on it. 
head into your week, I hope that you will go into it curiouser and curiouser, noticing God in those unusual places that others don't. And then instead of asking the question, who am I that you would send me here? May your prayer be instead, God use me anywhere because I know that you are faithful. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart. time. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Don't forget food and fellowship over in Wesley Hall. Have a wonderful week.